Hey guys, it's Mike again with uh, my second review of this week. Uh, I'll be doing a couple more videos, but um, so I'm going to be using my usual Batman, my Bat Books review of uh, the new 52. It's not really new, it's been like two months, I guess. So I don't know how to keep throwing new 52 on my covers. It irritates the crap out of me. Well, anyway, so I'm going to be reviewing Batman and Robin number three, Detective Comics number three, and Batman number three in that order, because this is. Um, as a, as always, um, as usual, or I'm gonna be doing weakest to strongest book. So um, and things haven't really changed since. Oh, uh, I things have changed a lot. All right, so starting off with Batman and Robin number three. Uh, excuse me, Batman and Robin number three. Uh, it's the same creative team as um, that creative team hasn't changed yet. Uh, starts off with I um, I believe Damien. He's playing chess with Alfred, and he's being Damien. He he's talking about how he's the best, how he's um, had training all around the world. You know, his mom has trained him to be the best that he can be. And he's a little upset that his father isn't allowing him to be Robin or to do anything. Um, Alfred being the voice of reason, you know, trying to, to mentor this young this young man just as he did with Bruce. But it's not working out as well. Um, Damien's a little too hot-headed. Um, he he's really doesn't fit the mold. Like he's very similar to Jason Todd, and I I feel that that's something that I that that's something I'll just at the end of the book, um, at the end of the review. Um, so it starts off um, him losing in chess to his um, to Alfred, and Batman is installing cameras around the um, the mansion um, to detect you know facial detection um, technology. Um, Batman then decides to go out on patrol. And he leaves Robin home, and Damien refuses to take that, so he decides to go on his own. Uh, Alfred sort of puts a tracker on him. Um, he puts two. Damien finds one because Damien thinks he's slick, but you know Alfred is the master of deception apparently. Uh, Robin he stops uh, this woman from being attacked, and he de he beats the crap out of these these just generic goons, like just you know dudes in beanies and like jeans and you know with knives and stuff he just beats the crap out of them um he he puts one into a coma and the big bad um he he comes he he, he tells robin he's like you know you you did great out there you know you gave into your you like you gave in you should have given to your instincts this guy i can tell he's already dead and he kills the guy robin uh, is, doesn't accept this and attacks the man and the man is like you know you could be so much better essentially you know you if you're out of you know, without Batman. Uh, pretty much this guy beats the crap out of Robin. And then Batman comes and fights this dude. Um, uh, um, this issue came out a long time ago. Um, Batman fights him, you know, telling him to get away from his son. And Batman essentially used uh, Damien as bait um, for this. Um... After uh, after Batman attacks this this gentleman, um, pretty much Batman is sort of gets the upper hand uh, and gets thrown across the street. And he when he he sh attacks a guy, he gets by a car, and him and Robin are captured. Uh, the issue and the issue ends with them waking up in the car in front of a drive-in. Like, just one lone car in the middle of a grassy field in front of a movie projection screen and a movie starts. Um, as for this issue, um, I found, as the reason I found this issue the, to be the weakest, not only is the story, the story's picked up a little bit, um, you know, I feel like the arc's almost over, a couple more issues, two or three, but it just, the pace is very, very slow. Like, this is the first time that Batman and Robin are fighting this villain. Sorry, the third issue. Yeah, no, it's still not much is happening. We don't really have a lot of backstory about why this guy is, like, why he's captured them and things, and stuff like that. And not only that, um, I just don't like Damian Wayne. He, he, he comes off as another Jason Todd, and I know how the, that turned out. You know, readers voted him to die. I mean, people might find him more interesting. But personally, I don't like, like, don't get me wrong, Tomasi writes Damien very well. Um, Damien is exactly what he should be. He's a pampered prince, you know, trained to be the best. He's the best at everything. He, no one is greater than him. And when he loses or fails at something, he throws a hissy fit. 
which is understandable because he's been trained to be perfect and you know he when he fails at it he doesn't accept failure well um yeah so not much has changed um yeah the story just a little slow i wish i hope it picks up like uh, it's like tomati knows how to write um this villain just seems so generic he 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 just has a really high tech suit um like compared to his earlier run on batman and robin which was excellent i like it a lot this just doesn't i feel this is a little underwhelming like um especially for this new 52 this isn't really like fitting their. I, I feel it doesn't fit like their standard of having great books every time you know like changing the game this really hasn't changed anything in my opinion except try to to rationalize this father-son relationship uh as for the artwork artwork hasn't changed at all or like not much um I still like the way Patrick Gleason is sticking to Jim Lee's Batman design. You know, very stocky, very powerful, and with the short cow ears. Uh, this villain looks very generic. He looks like a super Sandfish, um, I think Sandfish here from Siphon Filter, is that his name? I don't remember. Um, very high tech suit, lots of cameras, can shoot electricity, like, you know, has electric discharge type thing. Yeah, it's like. You know, he's just so. It feels very generic, just like generic supervillain in a high, in a high tech suit. And I don't like the way that the fight scene went down. Um, Batman and him fight a little bit, and you know, this issue was very short. I feel like just because so much of it centered around Damien, Damien's issues, and I I would have preferred to see a little more Batman and Robin doing things instead of Robin and then Batman like fighting separately like they're supposed to be a team um that's just my feelings about it so i'm gonna give this issue a 3.5 um i i know like tomasi can write a lot better than this um his batman robin white knight run as i've ever said was very good i liked it a lot especially well i mean there he was writing two different he was writing a different character dick grayson as batman and, you know i hope that um if he stays on as writer um like this like it gets better like i just feel this this arc for nude 52 first run for me personally i'm just i already know like it's not really helping me or motivating me to read batman and robin it, it will motivate people who don't read batman and robin who don't know anything about damian wayne it'll help them but for me who already knows the the, the backstory of batman this isn't really my cup of tea personally so 3.5 out of 5 for batman and robin um so Detective Comics, uh, number three is the next one. I'm reviewing uh, the same creatine. Actually, actually no, creatine has changed a little. Uh, it's just be, it's just Tony Daniel and Sandu Floria, I believe, in this issue. Unlike the other one, one of the rest of my Detective Comics one. Um, I believe the the artwork, the, the other time had more people. I forget. Um, I'm imp I was impressed by this issue. Um, let me just go through it and then I'll let me know tell you what happens. So it starts off with um, a recap basically in a Batman's uh, mind. You know, dead by on the floor, not Gordon. Um, my arm is his right side is numb. He was injected with some a needle. There's a whole bunch of villains around him, and he he says you no know words comes to his mind. Bring it on. Um, he he uses some gadgets um, similar to the one Jim Lee used in Justice League, like rocket propelled, like gas grenade bullet, rubber bullet things. Very interesting. Um, basically, he he fights off all these dudes, and he he's no his body's gonna stop working soon. So he grabs one of the guys, and he's like, you know, this guy who's hanging on to him. He's like, you know, if I can't get you off of me, I'm taking you with me. He basically jumps out a window, uses the guy as a shield, and takes him to interrogate. Um, this shoe is followed up by, I believe you see, um, Commissioner, not Commissioner Gordon, um, the, um, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the, the police, the news, news reporters were tipped off about Commissioner Gordon, Captain, Commissioner Gordon, I believe he's Commissioner in this, or Captain Gordon, he's missing, and they're like, you know, this is important, like, this, this, the city needs to know that they're safe from this person, the doll maker, and, um, they uh and um, Bullock uh, Harvey Bullock refrains from question uh, answering. We then see Batman um interrogate this this villain and he's like why aren't you talking and then he realizes the guy's mute, and he's like you know what you should just uh, like you should just indicate this from the beginning save me a lot of time he knocks the guy out leaves him 
I think, or send them to the police station. We then, I believe, see Gordon. I think it might be out of order, but this is general gist of the plot. Um, we see Gordon. He he wakes up in a cage and he feels a pain in his side. And when he realizes it, um, th you know, you realize they they took something out of him, like an organ, and he's freaking out. He's upset. He's angry. Uh, we see, uh, I believe, Bruce back at the back cave, and he's using his. Oh no, Gordon is in the cage, upset, and he sees this little girl who was kidnapped, Olivia. And he tells her, she's like, you know, I can, the guy wants me to be a part of his family, the dollmaker. I'll get a message to Batman. You just write it down. Batman sends this little girl with a message to, Gordon sends this little girl with a message to Batman. We then see Bruce in the Batcave. He's using technology. He um, uses the Bat computer. He sort of, he, using his cow, he took a picture of the guy's face, the dollmaker. And he reconstructs it using a normal person's face because the dollmaker's face is made up of like tons of different people. And you realize this person, he's the son of, I believe, a criminal that Gordon shot like once a while, a long time ago or something like that. And, um, you know, this guy, he, you can understand, he has a grudge against Gordon. That's why Gordon's his, uh, is more than Gordon being, you know part of the police, integral part of the police, it's, he's a crim, you know, this is, this is revenge. We then see, um, Gordon and the dollmaker. The dollmaker isn't killing Gordon yet because Gordon has organs and a rare blood type that he needs. That's, and he intends to, to harvest the rest of Gordon's organs to, to sell or something. Uh, we then see Olivia. Um, you know, Batman finds out someone turned on the bat signal. He goes, he meets a little girl, and he talks to her, and he goes off to mercy, to to save Gordon. We then see um the the a cop who's pretty much a douchebag. He's a dirtbag. He's like he tells little girls like a lot of people would would love to talk to you right now. I'll take you like come for a ride with me. Not in the creepy like I'm a like pedophile like I'm gonna make some money. She slits his throat, and. And when um and decides she she says the father would be so mad at me so she's under the influence of the doll maker. And we then show Batman at Mercy Hospital and the message says has a backwards R in it and that's like a code. Um, him and Gordon don't really use codes but he believes that this is a trap. Batman believes it's a trap. He he knows it's a trap. He senses it. He busts into the hospital demanding to see where Gordon is. He gets ambushed and is is knocked out. When he comes to, he's like in a, a, a ring and his arms are tied to strings, uh, like ropes. And he's getting attacked by a bunch of people that look like the Joker and that's where that show ends. Um, so as for the story of this issue, uh, it's a straight continuation of what happened in the last of issue two. It, I feel it got a lot better, issue three. Um, you know, Batman recapped everything with... He recapped the last issue in his mind, you know, for people who might not have read issue two, it was like, dead body, maybe Jim, you know, looks like Jim Gordon, not Jim Gordon. Um, knowing that, uh, you know, he uses some gadgets, it's really cool. And just the way Daniel wrote this Batman, he seemed, he was just badass. He, he was in a room full of supervillains, drugged, and he f took them on came out sort of on top I mean he he he, felt he had to retreat but you know he took one of them with him and managed to like in all this time while trying to be captured um which I thought was very good um I still don't like the dollmaker as a character I feel he reminds me too much of Professor Pig um and that that's a little annoying um but otherwise it's a great story I love the way him um Daniel tried to tried to it's it's like um trying to mystery this up slash you know make this a real detective story you know seen from Batman's point of view there's a lot of monologue in it there's a lot of you know just Batman's own thoughts are coming out of this which is I like a lot he doesn't really talk a lot to people um which is I like which is interesting and I like uh, Daniel's take on this uh, tech run like with this with this aspect art wise art hasn't changed um that much um. I still don't like the way Daniel draws Gordon. It's uninteresting. Um, his Bruce Wayne's alright. What 
makes what makes this issue solid on the art is his continue his Batman. It's not changed. It's still as strong and as it was in the first issue. Knowing that he's using gadgets, I like that. Um, you know, Batman is like that's the only reason. That's the reason I read Batman to, for the gadgets, for him to use his toys to to stop crime. Uh, so this issue is gonna get actually a four out of five for me. It's gotten a lot better. Um, I hope Daniel tries to make the doll maker a little more. I mean, the doll maker is not gonna get interesting. I just hope the art gets interesting. Um, you know, the art finishes with the bang. Like it's gotten, it's got it's picked up. I like it. You know, you know that's what I wanted. So uh, the last issue I'm reviewing is Batman number three by uh, same uh, same creative team Scott Snyder, Dirk Pulo, and Jonathan Glapion. Um, like. Nice cover. It's actually very nice with the limited palette they used. Um, so the issue starts off actually in the past with a gentleman. He's in a, like a nightgown. He's running around the city, um, and the cops find him. They realize it's Alan Wayne, um, Bruce's great great, I believe, great grandfather, at least two greats. Um, you know, he's gone crazy, and they're like, "What should we do? Should we call like a paddy wagon?" And they're like, "No, if we do this. You know, people, the news is gonna be crazy. It's like this man built Gotham." And if you read Scott Snyder's other work, Gates of Gotham, you you know this ties in. I like that a lot. Um, but this man built Gotham, and then he runs off. He falls into a sewer, and his fate is unknown to us. And then picks up um, with Batman. He's f in the t train tunnels under the city, fighting gang. This um, and he he whoops up on them, and he tells us um that you know the only way for this villain. For the guy who tried to assassinate him, this man in an owl costume, was through the rail lines on the city, and five gangs um, run the, the the city lines because there's five lines. He's already whooped up on four of them. This is the last one. He manages to defeat them, uses this cool lie detection uh, like tech, and lets the guy go. He's like they they had no part in this. Um, we then see him go back to the Bat Cave. You know, trying to figure out, like, who is this guy? What is his stuff? And him and Alfred have a discussion about, you know, you know, Batman, he knows everything about the city. Does he know, does Alfred, you know, being Alfred, know anything about owls? Alfred tells him, you know, all he knows, birds of prey. But he also tells him that his um, great-grandfather, Gregory Alan Wayne, like, who died in the sewer, he drowned. He had a, he gained an obsession with owls and this re leads to Bruce like figuring out it's like what is like something's going on with my family like my family has a hand in this somehow we then move on to Bruce visiting the politician I, I keep forgetting his name I'm gonna remember it but I forget his name um visiting this politician in um what you call it in the hospital and the the, the politician who's with him I'm gonna look it up real quick I'm gonna keep reading though talking though um but he visits him in the hospital, and the guy tells him, you know, he feels bad that Bruce is, you know, Bruce got thrown out a window, stabbed twice, and this and this guy who got stabbed once is in the hospital. Yeah. Bruce decides to support him to help better the city, and the guy tells Bruce, he's like, you know, maybe these guys are revealing themselves now because you're trying to change Gotham. Bruce realizes this is like, change Gotham. Um, he uh, then realizes... Um, Oh yes, his name is Lincoln Lincoln March. There we go. I knew it's something silly. Um, Bruce realizes, you know, is like, hmm, you know, maybe something, you know, these guys didn't want me to know. Now, he um, he he asks Alfred to, um, I believe, no, he um, he uh, he mentioned um. He mentions about the superstitions in the cities, about the 13th floor, and mentions how his grandfather was one of the first people to remove the 13th floor from their building. Not remove it, but like not label it, and also put a false floor in the building to, to take the bad luck away. He goes to Wayne Tower, and he goes to the 13th floor, and he discovers uh, a hidden floor with the, the, court, of, the court of Athena or whatever, that, whatever it was called, um, um, logo, and just like weapons and an armor. He, he goes through other buildings. Alan Wayne had been built in the last like a century. Every 13th floor has this this bad motif. When he uh, goes to the last one, finds it, it's even more modern. You know, 
there's a picture and you know in each of these you know ranging throughout the years and he realizes that something is terribly wrong that there's um you know that you know these guys exist and they're after him and the issue ends up with the building blowing up and the villain being um overlooking this all in all this issue is very good i love how scott snyder he he's mainly known for his horror stories but he's he's very good with this mystery detective type story which i like a lot he did in his last his other batman run and if you read american vampire um you know he's good with this mystery uh horror type feel which i this this book gives off that type of um you know um feeling um you know i liked how he taught brought in you know the history i love how he's bringing the history of gotham because not many books talk about the history of gotham don't bring in like you know the wayne family's past and this book does our wise capullo's art is is solid it's very good um there's some parts of the art which was weird um like for example um as i said lincoln mark the the other politician he he sort of looks different than he did in the first issue um slash second issue issue if i remember correctly how he looked um otherwise um you know Kapoor's art is very good for Batman. I'm actually liking his heart a lot. I hope he jumps on if he once if he finishes this his Batman run, he goes on to a different book. Um, I would love to see his take on other characters. Although he did a variant cover for Justice League, I didn't like it that much. Yeah, he, he draws women weird. Um, in my opinion. So all in all, I'm gonna give this issue um. To be told, I'm gonna give this issue a four point five out of five. Um, it's a little slow paced, there's not much action in it except for the beginning of the book. Um, I feel that, you know, if there was a little more action, especially with this, this court, this, um, the court of Athena, you know, it would be, been a lot better, but, um, it's very good for what it is. It's a very solid, very good mystery book. You know, Scott Snyder's, the quality has, is still top notch. Um, I just like a book with a little more action in it. Um, but the fight scene in this book was good though. Um, a lot of tech can you know batman being batman in it um so i know this, i thought that last issue was rushed this video was getting a little long i was just trying to rush get it out of here all right thanks for watching guys um you know if you enjoyed your books this week um let me know tell me what you're reading i'm always interested in that um thanks for watching have a good time